Hello everybody, today we're going to be starting a brand new tutorial up and we're going to be doing a pretty big one. We're going to be doing oil processing in Factorio. I'm going to be covering two primary things in this tutorial being oil processing and advanced oil processing. And I'll also be talking about uh, basically ways to move fluids, ways to store fluids and everything that comes along with those things. So without further ado, we have a lot to cover, so let's get into it. The first research that we're going to be talking about mostly is going to be uh, oil processing, which unlocks the pump jack, the refinery, the chem plant, the basic oil processing recipe, and the solid fuel recipe for petroleum. I'll talk more about solid fuel later, but I'm going to go ahead and start with actually collecting and processing your first bits of oil. So on the map, you will see that there are ores and stuff like that everywhere. Um, the purple dots are your oil. And similar to ores, they have a different yield associated with them, with the combined yield basically being how much it produces. If you mouse over a piece of crude oil on the ground, you'll see that they have different yields. This one is 244, for example, this one has 426. If I go ahead and place down a pump jack on this one and a pump jack on this one, you'll see that this one is gonna be producing expected amounts of 24.4 oil per second, whereas this one will be producing 42.6 oil per second. It is also worth noting that these can have module slots, so we can put speed modules in them to speed them up if we want to. And they also benefit from mining efficiency, or mining productivity rather. So for example, I have mining productivity leveled up quite a bit on this factory, so if we slow it down a little bit, we can see we get a lot of bonus production, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and place down a few of these pump jacks to start getting ourselves a intro starting oil, like a basically a starting oil spot, so we can actually get some oil put together. And I'm going to be connecting these up via pipes. So to move fluids in this game, you're going to have to use pipes. The downside to pipes is that if you have them placed in a line like this, you can't actually move through them, which is very inconvenient. But if you use underground pipes, similar to underground belts, you can move through them unimpeded. However, with underground belts, or with rather with belt in general, you can actually walk through it, um, but you cannot do that here. So just something to keep in mind. It can be pretty useful to use pipe to ground wherever you get the opportunity to do so. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of hook this up super quick, just like this. And this is gonna connect up all of our oil. And again, I'm going to run this underground. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and move my fancy Spider-Man out of here. So now that we've done that, we also, while researching oil processing, we researched a couple of new buildings being the oil refinery and the chemical plant. So I'm not going to get super in depth as to some of the things that the chem plant goes through until we get into advanced oil processing, because this is where you're going to make things like plastic and sulfur. I'm not going to be covering those. I'm just going to be covering the actual act of processing oil, which is going to be done in the oil refinery. So if we place down our first oil refinery, now that we've collected up our oil, we can see that we have a few different recipes, but the first one that we're going to have is going to be basic oil processing. So once we select that as the one thing that we're going to be processing, you'll see that there's two different input pipes, one of which is oil, one of which is blank. If you take it to the blank one, it will not work and you will not be able to process oil this way. You must take it to the one spot which is going to be on the lower end. So now that we're producing our first pieces of petroleum, we are going to have to store said petroleum. So I'm actually going to go ahead and place down a few more of these just for later to get it out of the way now. And we're going to run into a slight problem. We have to store this stuff and we have to, you know, ship it off to be used. We will also notice that, for example, on the outside where it's producing our materials, it's only outputting from one of these pipe spots. So if I put pipes all around this, it doesn't actually produce anything until I get to down here and then it starts taking the petroleum. So you can see this by pressing the Alt key. I highly recommend having the toggle Alt mode activated while messing with pipes slash fluids in general as it makes this process a lot easier. If, for whatever reason, you need to clear the system contents, you can hit the flush and this will remove the petroleum from the system entirely if you need to clear out stuff for storage or whatever reason. That is a way to do it. So, that was a pretty brief, pretty quick introduction on how to make petroleum. It's a pretty straightforward process. You take oil from the ground, you run it through a refinery, and boom, now you have petroleum. But there's a couple of different things that come with this. For example, if you fill up your pipes similar to chests, it stops producing. 
So we can add storage fluid containers, storage tanks, whatever you want to call them, to hold on to our petroleum gas for us, and these will fill up for us. If we decide to place a second storage tank, they have to connect via the pipes. As you can see, these do not actually take in petroleum because they're not connected. But if we connect the pipes like so, you'll see that now they both have the petroleum symbol over it, and these will act to split the petroleum evenly between the two and try to disperse it evenly. And again, if we add another one, it'll do the same thing, and it will work to split this evenly among the three containers. So, just so you're aware. So making petroleum is a pretty easy process. Moving the fluids isn't necessarily that hard either. The part of this tutorial that I'm really here for is to show you guys how to manage your fluids and how to get that stuff done with advanced oil processing. I'll do that whenever the sun comes back up. Okay, now that the sun's pretty much come back up, it's gonna be a little bit easier to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start prepping to show you guys how to do advanced oil processing. Once you research it, you're gonna get access to a new form of processing called advanced oil processing. Its ingredients are water and crude oil, and it produces heavy oil, light oil, and petroleum. This doesn't sound necessarily too difficult to deal with. There's just a few different fluids that you have to take out, but that can be a bit of a pain if you're not like seasoned with this, which is what this tutorial is for. It's assuming you've never done this before. So there's a couple of problems that we bump into almost immediately. The first problem that we bump into is that our inputs now have two different fluids. This may not sound like that much of a problem, but the oils and the water have to go into specific spots. So for example, if I wanted to set it up nice and simply like so, and I just wanted to say, do this one for now, I can run them just like that, and that'll produce the fluids that we need because we have oil going into the oil and because we have water going into the water slot. Again, I highly recommend having the Alt menu turned on as that makes this a lot easier. Now that we have that taken care of, we now want to find a way to move this to all of our little machines, to all of them at the same time, which can be a bit of a process. The reason why this can be a bit of a pain is because if I run the water over here, I'm gonna show you guys a key mechanic. If you have oil in one pipe or any a fluid in one pipe and you have another fluid in another, so for example, this one has a water, if you try to connect these pipes, it will not work. It'll give you an error message saying cannot connect systems with different fluids, which is a bit of a problem. For example, if I wanted to say run water like this and fill these up with water, I can't run oil next to this and I have to make sure that that's not connected at all. And then I have to do something like this to make sure it gets that. And I'll have to run under the grounds to say, do something like this. This is just a part of the problem solving and the puzzle solving that goes into this issue. But this is pretty much what's gonna have to happen. We're gonna have to utilize underground pipes to ensure that we can give all the fluids to where they need to go. And I'm going to demonstrate this and just kind of pretty much solve this for you guys. And I'll show you guys how I do it. Is this the best way to do it? Not necessarily. I don't, I don't think that that's nearly the best way to do it. I'm sure there's way better ways. And in fact, I know there's a better way because I've made a video on it in the past using robots, but I digress. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself a oil and a water line. We'll have the oil line run like this and we'll have the water line run like this. This isn't a very clean way to do this, but this is what I'm going to do for the sake of visualizing the process a bit better. So now all I'm going to do is use pipe to grounds to connect up the fluids as needed. And as we'll be able to see here, if we clear it out, these are both getting the fluids they need from their perspective pipes. So that one should be all good to go. And we can connect them all up like this as well to do this. This is just the easiest way to visualize this. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing it exactly like this because like I said earlier, pipes are annoying because you can't actually move through them. But if you really want to edit that issue out entirely, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is underground the spaces between them or don't if you don't want to, or you think it makes it too annoying to deal with. And these are slightly more expensive than regular pipes. So I would understand if you don't want to, but this makes it so that you can actually move around inside your little area without getting stuck, which is pretty useful. So now we have a little setup to give them the fluids they need. Now we have to go over here and get all of the fluids out. I'm gonna demonstrate a key mechanic, and this is a mechanic that'll haunt your factory for the rest of your gameplay. For example, if 
I have heavy oil being made and light oil and petroleum. If I remove the heavy oil from the system and I don't remove the light oil, let's say I just remove the petroleum and I just remove the heavy oil. So now this thing only has light oil stuck in it. You'll notice that it's not producing anymore because it still has some parts of it that are full. Only when I connect up something to remove all of the fluids from it, will it actually move again. You have to be able to remove all fluids from this and make sure that none of them fill up in order to continue production. This can be a very big hassle later on in the factory, but I'm gonna wait till day to continue this tutorial. Okay, so the sun has come back up, so now we're gonna continue the process, as they call it. So we need to, as I was previously talking about, we have to remove all three fluids from this thing effectively. One thing you're gonna notice is that if we have these buildings placed right together, is we can't actually move the heavy oil because it is right next to the output for the petroleum of the other building. So that means that we're gonna have to at least put one of these fluids underground for each of these buildings. So I'm gonna choose for it to be heavy oil just for the sake of convenience. Just for the sake of picking something ultimately, really. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that part of the puzzle. So our puzzle starts with our heavy oil being undergrounded and taken farther away. Now we can just run a regular pipe out with our light oil and our petroleum like so. And we can go out as far as we want. It really doesn't matter too much. I'm kind of drawing these out just to help you visualize exactly what I'm doing. But we're going to underground them later to save up on space and to make it look a little more clean. Cool. So now we have our fluids moving. Now, realistically, we could say put a bunch of storage tanks here and here, but we can't actually put them there because that's connecting things. So we need to effectively find a place to store up all of our stuff. I'm going to choose to do that to the south of my area. And I'm going to go ahead and start moving my fluids down south so I can do that. And you can see here with the setup I've done, I'm not going to be able to draw a straight line with petroleum as it's going to try connecting up with the light oil, which I cannot do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use our underground belts, or rather our underground pipes, to move the petroleum and to make sure it's all connected. We'll kind of flow them into each other like so. And now if we run our pipes all the way down here, I'll be able to place down storage containers to store up all of our excess fluids. And if you want to extend storage, you can of course just place down more of these tanks to make sure that you can continue storing up resources as needed. So that is a pretty basic setup for how to get your fluids where you need them to be. You can move them however necessary using pipe to grounds to move things out. So you can say, move your light oil this way and you can move your heavy oil this way. Whatever you wanna do with it, that is all up to you at this point. I don't know how you built your factory. That being said, I am going to talk more in depth about the mechanic where we have to use all of our oils as we're producing them. Otherwise, our setup will eventually stall out. So I'm going to get on that as soon as daybreak arrives again. Okay, so I just decided to light up this area so we can actually see a bit better. I'm going to start talking about then other things that you research that you unlock whenever you get advanced oil processing. So we unlock a couple of other new recipes. We unlock heavy oil cracking to light oil. We unlock light oil cracking to petroleum and we unlock solid fuel recipes for heavy oil and light oil. And if you recall, we already unlocked the light oil solid fuel recipe. So now we have solid fuel recipes for light oil, solid or light oil, heavy oil, and petroleum. And we also can, if you look at these recipes, in a chem plant, we can use water and heavy oil to make light oil, and we can also use light water or light oil and water to make petroleum. So for example, if I were to say, let this system run entirely on its own, because of the way that the advanced oil processing uh, works when it comes to production. The recipe makes mostly petroleum and a lot of light oil and some heavy oil. If these guys have equal storage capacity, 
I will fill up on petroleum before I fill up on anything else. So I would have less petroleum and less, or I would have more petroleum, less light oil, and even less heavy oil. So in order to remedy this issue, we need to make sure, because for example, if this was connected to a full factory and we were using, say, petroleum to make plastic, because you need plastic for a lot of things later on. If we use the petroleum to make plastic and we don't use any light oil at all, we still have to extract the light oil from this machine in order for it to function. And so it needs to be stored somewhere like we have here. If these fill up with light oil entirely, we will no longer be producing petroleum, which will halt our factory's production, meaning that we need to be using or storing consistently all of our resources. And I'll showcase kind of what that looks like from my productions. And this may be a little interesting to some of you. So I've already pretty much gone through and marked the three different fluids that I'm making here, petroleum gas, heavy oil, and light oil. And this is my production per minute. And this is my consumption per minute of the same exact materials. So I'm using robots for a lot of these, so it's a little bit different, but I will go ahead and point out a couple of things with these graphs. Currently, I'm producing an average of 210,000 petroleum every minute. I'm also currently consuming 180,000 petroleum every minute, meaning I am net producing and storing 30,000 petroleum per minute. And also, I am producing 89,000 on average light oil per minute, and I'm consuming 137,000 light oil per minute. So I'm using more light oil than I'm making which means that my petroleum would never get stuck because, for example, my light oil will never fill up because I'm using more of it than I am making. And, of course, to take a peek at the uh, what we have here for heavy oil, my production and my consumption are almost identical, meaning that I am consuming all of the heavy oil that I am making. The only reason why my light oil consumption is higher than my light oil production right now is because I have a stockpile. So I'm currently stockpiling petroleum. I am currently emptying my stockpiles of light oil and my net zero of heavy oil is staying a net zero. So my heavy oils will stay at zero. My light oils are emptying and my petroleums are filling up. So if my petroleum gets to full, and my light oil will stop being produced and so will my heavy oil because I'll have nowhere to put my petroleum. So that's something that I will be keeping in mind for my personal factory in the future. And see, I told you that this was gonna bother you for the rest of your factory's existence, and I wasn't kidding. But if I wanted to do something with my petroleum because I have extra, I have a few options. And I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of them now. I can do a couple of things. I could say go in and flush the systems that they're stored in, like I did, like I showed you guys you could do earlier, where I can just say empty the storage container to open up some more room. I could also use it to make product because these are the things you can make. You can make petroleum into plastic, sulfur. You can also make it into solid fuel, which is what I'm going to use for this example because it's pretty nice. If I need to use extra petroleum, I'm going to funnel it into making solid fuel. And I'm just gonna do that by connecting up the pipes that desire petroleum with pipes that are full of petroleum. And now these will start to make solid fuel. And you can do this with any of the fluid types as we've researched. So we can make light oil into solid fuel, we can make petroleum into solid fuel, and we can make heavy oil into solid fuel. So if anything, Everything else is ignored. You can turn 20 pieces of petroleum into a single piece of, or 20 units of petroleum, rather, into a singular unit of solid fuel. And if I take all the solid fuel out, you see that they stack in stacks of 50. So this is a way that you can potentially store large numbers of petroleum in an indirect way if you're just trying to get rid of it. If you don't really have anything to do with it, that's fine. There are uses for it though because ultimately you could just do something stupid like this where you just have a chest going into a chest going into the chest and whenever you don't want it anymore you can just say blow it up and it gets rid of all of the items don't mind the fact that my robots just replaced everything instantly and you can see the storages are back to near zero this is a way to kind of keep your stockpiles under control 
able to destroy them the appropriate way. I'm also going to showcase if you say, for example, need extra petroleum or light oil or something like that, we can use cracking to make different types of oil. So I'm going to go ahead and select the first one on the list, which is going to be heavy oil cracking into light oil. So this uses water and heavy oil and we'll rotate it like so. And if we give it the water that it desires in its preferred port and we give it the heavy oil that it wants, it will turn heavy oil and water into light oil, which we can then send back into the system appropriately. That being said, if we are in need of petroleum and we need to get rid of our light oil or we need to get rid of our heavy oil, we could say turn it into petroleum. So you can kind of convert these uh, fluids into one another as per your needs. I just figured I would cover it because I am making a tutorial after all. And if we connect these up, we can see something like this where I'm turning directly heavy oil into light oil and light oil into petroleum, which is the one that you actually use the most anyway. So this may be something that you may wanna look into making to make sure that you have the petroleum you need and you have something to do with your heavy oil. You could also, if you're looking to get rid of your light oil, completely bypass using this and just put down a chem plant and use light oil cracking to petroleum and just connect it up as needed, of course. So hopefully this gives you a couple of ideas on things that you can do with your chem plants and shows you how to at least get the process started with your advanced oil processing. Now, I'm going to add in a quick little extra tidbit at the end of the video. Oh, I lied. I love my shitty little meme here. So um, I was going to throw in a little bit of a robot tutorial showing a couple of the ways that I used robots to kind of do stuff with oil, but I've already made a video on this and this tutorial's already gone on for 20 minutes. If you want to see how I used robots to move my stuff as needed, where I used barrels, I'm going to refer you to this video here. And I'm gonna try putting an I card in the top right for that. I've never done that before. So if it's there, cool. If not, it probably won't be. It'll be in the description for you guys to see. So I highly recommend checking it out and it's starting to pick up volume and I'm glad you guys are really enjoying it. And I'm gonna go ahead and end this tutorial video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Look forward to more tutorials to come. And if you have any questions or you'd like to see certain tutorials made or even a factorial playthrough idea or something like that, go ahead and leave it in the comments. Thank you guys again. And I'll see you soon.